Hey there, today's video topic is how to get information about documents out of SharePoint. And there's a few different ways to do this, so we're going to go through our options and what those look like in Power BI. And the, the common use case you'll see for this is, say, when you have a whole bunch of documents of a particular type, say contracts or proposals, or a team that uses SharePoint um, for their document management, heavily, you'll often get people wanting to look at, say, how many contracts have I uploaded by date, or um, how many contracts we have of a particular type, or I want to see contracts by vendor, or that kind of thing. So this is where that technique is pretty useful, and you can report on that in Power BI. So I've uploaded some documents to a sample library here. So I just threw some stuff in here with, um, I put in one custom column in here that's just a document type so you can see what that looks like. And I'm gonna show you what the different connections look like and the differences first, and then we'll go through how to do them. So um, option number one is via OData. And OData is kind of the original way to connect to SharePoint. Um, SharePoint data. Um, back in the day when Power BI was first released, there was no SharePoint connector. So this is kind of um, the way we used to do it um, in the olden days, and it still works today. So um, what you've got here is you got your file name with the file extension on it. So if you wanted to, you could split the file extension out um, for reasons. And you have the created date, whether it's a folder or a document. Um, these created by, modified by, um, that's the ID of the user, but there's another field that'll um, let you expand out the actual username. And then this right here is the path, and the path is important because you use that to um, build a URL. So in your report, you could make it so that when people click the name of a file, it'll open that, um, that document in SharePoint. And the other thing, uh, so here's your created by, so you can click this little double arrow to expand out the name or email address of the person. And this, um, when you start expanding people fields in different connectors, they come out very differently. So if you're trying to get a person's name, that's not always this name field. So let's just try it and see what happens here. So if I expand that, so that did come out to my name, so that's good. Um, we'll try it in the other two so you can see how that works out. But um, you've also got checked out here, which um, can be useful because you can find things that um, say are checked out versus aren't checked out. And let's check out SharePoint list. So there's two SharePoint list connectors. There's V1 and V2. And when you're connecting to the SharePoint online list, it'll um, under advanced, I think it'll give you an option of selecting one or two. Right now, one is the default. And it, <clears throat> so if you want to make sure to go in and um, actually select two, two is the newer one. So this one gives you this kind of interesting URL, which is a, um, embed preview. So this is if you copy and paste this into a browser. This will actually give you a kind of interesting file preview. Which, okay, I'm not sure what the use case for that would be here, but um, it's interesting. And Let's see what else we got. So the interesting thing about V1 it has most of the same fields, except that you'll notice that there's not, as we scroll through here, there's not a path. But you can actually get the file path by expanding this file option here. So if you click the little expando, it's got a bunch of stuff in here, but it does have the server relative URL, which is going to be the path that you wanted for creating a link to the file. And it also has the file name, which you need because this connector doesn't have file name at the top level. And all right, so let's expand those. Now we have the file name and the um, URL. And you'll do, you will have to concatenate in your tenant root URL to these. Select the ones that you need and right click and do a remove other columns that cleans things up substantially. And this one, let's see if I expand the created by and see what this one looks like. 
Oh, here, this one does have liked by. So the liked by is um, if people have liked something. So this is something that you would use mostly with pages. So pages in SharePoint are in the site pages library. And if you're trying to get information on how many people liked um, what pages or what the most liked pages are in SharePoint, this is what you would want to use. In this case, we're using files and usually you don't see likes attached to files. So, okay, where's that? Oh, author. So author is the created by, in this case, I've named it something else. And if I expand name, is that my name? Let's find out. No, so this looks like my UPN. So let's not use that. I don't want name, let's try, I think it's, is it title? Let's say it's title. Yeah, so in this one you want author title and that's actually your name. And the V2 connector, I like the V2 connector for connecting to SharePoint lists um, because, by the way, um, we're using the SharePoint list connector to connect to these document libraries because document libraries are actually a type of list in SharePoint. They're just a list where the record is a file instead of an item. So um, the SharePoint list connector will work. And these are created by here. Let's see what this one does. This one's got multiple, it's got a list, which is interesting. Is there expand to new rows? Okay, that just expanded the records. So there's There should only ever be one person who created something. So expanding it um, to rows shouldn't be a problem. And then we can get, let's try title, betting it's title. Yep, so we want created by title uh, in the V2 connector as well. So this one, where's the path in this one? Do we have a path for our file? So what I like to do when I'm trying to find stuff is go to this view tab and then the go to column because that'll let you search for things. So you search for path, no, how about URL? No, where is it? Okay, so it looks like as far as I can tell, the SharePoint list v2 connector doesn't seem to have the file path Cool. All right. So I wouldn't use um, SharePoint list v2. I would use v1 or OData. Um, I like OData better because for at least for documents, because you don't have to do a bunch of expansions to get the URL and the file name. It's just already there at the root. So let's go through how to use this connector. So there's a specific URL in every SharePoint site that has a OData feed and you can connect either to the OData feed for this site or you can connect to the one that is attached to the list. I usually just connect to the site one and then navigate down to the list um, but what we do is you see this VTI bin slash list data dot SVC. I'm going to put this um, snippet into the video description and you just basically paste that on the end of your site. So I'm going to copy just this part so you can see how this works and then go back to my SharePoint site. So when you're in SharePoint, you have your um, tenant root URL, so the whatever.sharepoint.com, it's my dev tenant, and then slash sites. And then this right here is your site, um, kind of your site name. I wouldn't say it's exactly the name because it won't have punctuation in, or spaces in it, but um, what you want to do is paste it right after that site part of the URL. So I'm just going to paste that in there and go to it. So I always go to it first to make sure that I've got the link right and this is what it should look like if you've got it right. And I have occasionally had issues where um, some sites for whatever reason the OData feed isn't working. Um, back in the day there was this, I don't know if this still is true or not, but it used to be that if you created um, lists or libraries that started with a number, then it broke your OData feed. I'm guessing they fixed that by now, but um, there's there's cases where there's issues with it, but um, they're few and far between, so it should work fine. So what we do to make a new connection is go to new source and then OData feed. And if you don't see it in that dropdown, just do a search for it in the connectors. We're going to paste that in. So there's our site forward slash um, VTI bin list data SVC. Click OK. And then we want, in this case, it's the main document library, which is called documents, but you could connect to any list or library with this. Click OK. 
All right, so let's remove the columns that we don't need from this. I'm going to keep the file name and I'm going to keep the created date and I'm holding down control as I select multiple of these. I'm going to keep the content type because I want to be able to remove folders, make it a flat view, and I'm going to keep the path. And you could keep the created by or modified by user here and expand that. I don't need it in this particular case. Um, let's do a right click, remove other. And I'm going to change this created date to a date type field. And I'm going to filter this on, um, I'm going to take out the folders because I'm only interested in the files. Okay, so now we need to create a URL for these files so that, um, if, say, if I put this in a table, um, then when people click on the name of the file, they can open up that link in a browser. And this is trickier than you might expect because of the way that SharePoint handles um, specific file types. So let's go through how to do that. I'm going to do it in Power Query. If you have issues with your um, your data set refresh time being long, you could also do this in DAX. So let's go to add a column and I'm going to do a custom column. I'm going to call this file URL. And we're going to do on the name of our tenant. So we need to add that in there. HTTPS. There and then we're going to do a space and space and we're going to do the path. And looks like the path doesn't have a trailing slash, so I'm going to add that in here. Oops, slash and the file name. So the thing with um, the Office files specifically and the Word documents, PowerPoint, and Excel files is that if you go directly to the URL that ends in this file extension without anything on the end of it, it's just going to download the file. It doesn't open it in a browser unless you add a little bit to the end of that. Like if you're working with, um, say, all PDFs, then you don't have to do this step because PDFs will open in a browser by default. But um, for Office files, um, you need to add a um, and the and question mark web. Actually, it's question mark and if I remember, I'm doing this out from memory. So web equals one. So this will make it open in a browser and you only want this if um, your file is an office file. So if you've got um, file types that are um, other things outside of this, then you'll want to put this in an if statement. So say if file extension, so you could split the file extension out, um, like duplicate this column, split it on the period to get the file extension. You could say if the file extension is XLSX or DOGX or PPTX, then um, and add this part or um, if it's not that then don't add this part um, in this case all of these are a type that benefits from this so i'm just going to go with this and click ok and this file url if we try it out i'm just going to copy and paste this into a browser And it worked. So there's no data in this file, but that's because there's actually no data in this file. So it's fine. OK, so now if we want to use this in Power BI, um, the, the, if I've got multiple document libraries that I'm to, trying to tie together into a report, it works really well for this. So um, because SharePoint views do a lot of these things already. So if you're only dealing with one document library, oftentimes it doesn't make sense to pull it into Power BI. But if you've got say 20 um, document libraries in SharePoint and you're trying to um, report on or um, pull them all into one location and use the slicers to filter them, uh, then this would be a good time to use these things. So um, I need the file name and I need to take this path and I need to change the data category 
to a web URL. And then we're going to add conditional formatting on the name field here. We're going to do field value and then get that URL field that we made. And first is fine because there's only ever one value there. All right, so that worked. And if you want to, you could add some more stuff in here. Like, the, oh, the created date is formatted weird. I hate that. Okay, so short date. If this were a real report, you could do like a count of created over time by dropping the counts and whatnot into charts. I only have like 10 files, so that's going to look really lame if I do that. So we're just going to, so let's see if that worked. Make sure I have the right browser up here so I don't open in a weird tab. Okay, so let's try this one. This is a CSV. Let's see what happens with this with the web equals one on it. it. Looks like it did the right thing. Country codes, cool. Okay. So that was how to pull in file metadata using Power BI with the OData and SharePoint list connectors. Thank you for watching.